But this one we are. Uh, the Simpsons arcade game. It came out right around when season two was a big thing. And so for so what was your when did you first lay eyes on this game? I'm assuming it was the arcade. Probably or, in the arc one of the arcades yeah. back in the day. Did you like did you you played it in the yeah, arcades though? Yeah. Okay. See I played it a couple times in the arcades. It was one of those that it was so hard that like one quarter didn't get you very far. And in fact, yeah. we played it today on your you know, through an arcade emulator and we put in fifty quarters, fifty credits. We'll say they're twenty five cents a piece. Yeah. And by the time we beat it, we had like twenty two quarters left. So we put in twenty eight quarters yeah. between the two of us. Uh or excuse me, we put in we put in fifty. We spent twenty eight quarters, mm-hmm. which you do the math, that's seven dollars. Yeah. So we paid seven dollars to beat the game, technically. It's not that doesn't sound terrible. It's not when you well, say it out loud. But it's for not a kid terrible. back in the day when you would get maybe two dollars worth of quarters, like yep. seven dollars in like the early nineties to ask your parents to play an arcade What's game. What's that with inflation? I mean Let me do that, hold probably, on. Probably like seventy five dollars or something. I don't know. What you're gonna look up an inflation calculator right now? <laughs> <laughs> well, while you're looking that up, um, I'll share my memory. So the first time I laid eyes on it was a an arcade in, I think it was a Chuck E. Cheese, actually, growing up. Uh, there was a Chuck E. Cheese by my house when I was a kid. We used to go there every so often, and it had Ninja Turtles. It had uh, The Simpsons. I'm trying to think what else it had. Probably some racing games, but the two that stood out for me were the Ninja Turtles arcade game and the Simpsons arcade game, which, again, was $25 per credit. And it, just like the Turtles game, it was designed to kick your ass. Um, it was made by Konami, who is known for you know some beat 'em ups, but not as well as like a Capcom. But I would say the, the beat 'em ups that Konami has made were uh, pretty great. This one played very similar to the Ninja Turtles arcade game in terms of it was two buttons. Um, you know, you had a jump button and an attack button, and you could do different combos depending on which button you pushed first. Uh, like like in Turtles, you could do that jump and then dive down kick. Uh, there's a very similar uh, move that the characters could do in The Simpsons as well. So very similar. You, you kind of knew their formula, and if you know their formula. Formula and how they kind of do things, it's you know what to expect with that. Sixteen dollars. Sixteen dollars. That's what you found. Okay, so sixteen dollars to beat an arcade game in about thirty minutes, I would say. That's what you're concerned about. I'm concerned about that it's over fifty percent inflation. Yeah, I was only joking when I said it would be high. Yeah, I. Oh, jeez. Okay. Well, yeah. That's anyway. Sixteen dollars. Sixteen dollars in 2024 to beat the Simpsons arcade game. So yeah, if you if you find that game for fifteen bucks, then you know you've already made your money back. Uh. It, it's it's not an easy game. No. But if you have unlimited quarters, like certain ways to play it allow, it's not a hard game. Exactly. Uh, and it's it's The Simpsons, so it's a lot of fun. Now, you are our resident Simpsons historian, uh, for better or for worse. Yep. So I, was, I kept asking you as we're playing the different levels, and we'll go through the levels one by one. I figure that's probably the best way to do this. Um, and I was like, who's that character? Is that a recurring character? Who's that? And so like, there were a few where you're like, oh, yeah, they were in this. They show up later like this. And then there's some where you're like, I've never seen that character before in my life. Yep. So there's some exclusive characters to this, to this game. Um, so let's, just, let, let's talk about the plot. So it's a pretty bare-bones plot. There is a rare... The Simpsons are walking out of a store in downtown Springfield. There's like a rare diamond that Smithers is carrying. Or stealing. Or stealing. Would Smithers steal, though? Is that... I mean, they're not criminals, him and Mr. Burns, are they, technically? Yeah, I mean, Burns is. Is he? Okay. And then if Burns is doing things, you know, that he knows they're illegal. Yeah. Like, he sells plutonium in episodes. <laughs> oh, a, all right. So some bad people. So why wouldn't they take a diamond through exactly. quote unquote legitimate sources. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, they they bump into the Simpsons. Smithers throws a bag up in the air with the diamond. The diamond lands in uh, Maggie's hand. She swaps out her pacifier for the yep. diamond, and Smithers is not going to accept that. So he instead of taking the diamond out of Maggie's mouth, he said, "Well, I'm just going to kidnap Maggie instead." Explains why she shot Mr. Burns. Yes. Well, there you go. You know what? Maybe this is canon in a way. Maybe. And and this is why she shoots Mr. Burns. Shoots Mr. Burns. Everybody thinks it's Smithers destroy them both. Yep. There it is, man. Sets him up. Uh, so, of course, the Simpsons family has to go after Maggie. And yep. with each level, they get closer and closer to, to finding her and saving the day and stopping Mr. Burns and all that fun stuff. So, that being said, why don't we go ahead and just, like, go through the levels one by one. Sure. There's, there's only eight levels. Um, and they're, they're and we'll kind of go through, like, the bosses and whatnot. So, the first level, like, like I said, they're coming out of a store in downtown Springfield. And that's where the adventure starts. They're, they're walking through. And, and most of the bad guys, so, like, the foot soldiers of this game are, like, corporate lackeys for Burns, I I guess yeah. Uh, now he's like a fat white dude with like bald a balding head. White and like, is yellow. Well, whatever. Okay, yellow dude uh, with like a pink shirt, like pink shirt and tie, 
slacks. Like, is that a, a character from the show? Or? No. No, okay. So it's a, a corporate lackey that's exclusive to the game. Well, I mean, it could have been a background character. It's not I guess. anybody you would really... He doesn't have a name. No, okay. Well, and there's so many of them. I guess that makes sense. Like, you wouldn't have a bunch of the same character walking around. So it is just, like, nameless corporate whatever. So that's the main one. But then there's also, like, these agents that come out of the stores wearing, like, trench coats or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then you probably got some, like, mafia guys in there. Um, what else? I mean, it's it, every level has just got so much going on, and there are little side characters that, again, for me, not knowing the show as well as you, I'm sure you probably yeah. noticed a few more Easter eggs There's and characters. some background characters, like, that are easy to, to spot. Like, Krusty's yeah. a background character. Um, Bleedy, Bleeding Gums Murphy from the earlier seasons. Obviously, they mow later on, but there's a few that you can recognize. Yeah, uh, and by the way, I... I sh- it should have been obvious, but I'll say it. So you can play as four different characters, Marge, Lisa, Homer, and Bart. Uh, each one has their own unique attacks, but they all basically play the same from what I could tell at least. Yeah. Well, Homer doesn't have any real... He just uses his fists. Well, sure, yeah. They, so Bart uses a skateboard. Maggie uses um, a jump rope as like a whip. Lisa. Uh, sorry, Lisa. Okay. Sorry, I did I did it again. Uh, and then Marge uses a vacuum cleaner, which is totally not... Be canceled now if she did that. <laughs> but she does use the shit out of that vacuum cleaner. She does, and she uses what? her butt... She does, and she uses her butt for like a running attack, yeah. which is uh, fantastic. Or it's like like the powerful attack, like you yeah. hit the jump and attack button at the same time. Uh, but they all basically do the same amount. Of, I don't think there's a really much of a difference between them, right? Not really. I don't Just think I think is. Lisa maybe has more of a reach with her jump rope. Yeah, that's why I picked her at the end. Yes, and you you did really well with her. So, uh, so you make your way through downtown Springfield. You get to the end, and the boss is. He doesn't have a name. It's just a wrestler. Yeah. They, they drop him out of the sky from a helicopter. He's a giant wrestler. Yeah. And according to you, he's never been in any of the shows that not you remember. Not that I've seen. Not that you've seen. So he's not like a recurring character. And you just you beat him, and you beat on him until he blinks and dies. Um, That's it. There's a couple of weapons you can pick up throughout the different levels. Um, yeah. So like in this case, there's like a bowling ball that you can pick up and chuck at him. Correct. But I think it's like a one-time use weapon. So it is. It doesn't really do much. Yep. And so it's just the the classic Konami beat em up formula. You, you jump in, you hit, you back away, you, you you rinse and repeat until he's gone. Now here's the deal: like you, I say this like it's an easy strategy. You're still going to get your ass kicked and die, however many times. Yeah. Uh, like I said, in our case, it was you know 28 times between the mm-hmm. two. Well, no, you get two lives per credit, and then yeah, so we technically died 56 times, <laughs> which isn't terrible, I guess. So you beat the wrestler, you move on to Krusty Land, uh, but before you do that, you get to a bonus level, the first bonus level of two bonus levels, yes. where you have to inflate a balloon that's in the shape of your head. Yes. And it doesn't. all it does is give you a high score. Like, there's no other point to it, right? Yeah, I don't so, think so. No. Uh, so then you move on to level two, it's Krusty Land, and again, shenanigans are afoot, you're walking around. It's <sighs> fantastic. That's a really good Krusty impression. Yeah. Got the voice for it. Yeah, you do. So you're again. It's you're beating up a lot of the same characters. There's maybe a few extras in there. Um, you know, probably show ex like from the Krusty show. There's those little guys that like pop in and out of the trees. Yeah, the little rabbit looking guys. But they have like one ear or something in the in the center of their head. They're very very early Simpsons. Okay, I'm not even sure where they're from. Well, that, and that's the thing too is they they don't have a lot to pull from yet because they're only two seasons in. There's there's a good amount of like background characters that you'll recognize, but for the most part. Like, it, considering the show has been on for over 30 years, like, there's, you're not, <laughs> you're not going to see some of the familiar faces that you expect to see because they didn't come in until late. Like, for example, I don't think Flanders is in this because he doesn't show up until, what, season two or three at the earliest? I'm trying to remember. What was that? I'm sorry. Uh, Flanders. When does Flanders show up? Very early. Okay. So, but he wasn't, was he in this? No, he wasn't. No. Okay. So this was even, I think, pre-Flanders. And so... You're going through Krusty Land, and then uh, the boss here, it's a little unoriginal, but you're fighting basically a giant Krusty balloon, and you just have to beat it until it pops. Yeah. And that's that's basically it. Nothing to write home about there. Uh, from there, you go to the Springfield Discount Cemetery. That's a funny name. It is a funny name. And I asked you, I was like, is that a recurring place? And, and again, maybe in the early seasons it was, but it wasn't. I mean, I've... There's cemeteries in episodes, but yeah. they don't. It doesn't have a name that I could tell. There is a cemetery where, uh, to me, the most famous cemetery scene is um, Homer's mother episode. Okay, when he, he, he meets his mother as an adult, and it's uh, they're, they're showing Abe, they're showing where Abe Simpson's gonna maybe be buried, and he's I can't afford it. It's too expensive. That um, that's the only time I ever really remember. Interesting. Okay, and so maybe that's where. 
I don't know. Who knows? Maybe. Um, so you go through, and this one's almost like the it's the Halloween episode or Halloween level, I should say, because you're fighting uh, zombies yep. and people uh, agents dressed as ghosts. Yeah, they're, boo haunted house. <laughs> basically, I was waiting for you to say it. Yeah. Uh, and they're hanging from trees, which sounds messed up. Uh, but then you beat up the ghosts in the sheets, and then they pop out. The agents yeah. pop out, and you, you finish. It's them off. so corny that it's it's good. It is. Uh, and then right at the end, so you get to the end of the cemetery. I think there's a couple of agents like that you fight at the end there, but yeah. they're not like bosses per se. Like mid-level bosses. They're like mid-level bosses, but then that's... Enforcers. It, they're enforcers. Yeah. There, there you go. But uh, so at the end of the cemetery, these real ghosts show up and scare you under a plot, like a, a grave plot. Yeah. And uh, lo and behold, it's actually a secret entrance, uh, an elevator that takes you down you know, below it's like a creep. Of you, course. And there's, of course, men waiting down there to attack you. They're just hanging out in a crypt. I mean, don't you guys... I mean, uh, don't our listeners do that? I mean, it, it might we be, do it. Yeah, no, it might be more common than we think. Just I don't know. hanging out in elevators and underneath, you know, <laughs> gravestones. I'm not judging, man. I'm just saying. Uh, so you do that, and then you get to the end of the level. I think that's where you've had the agents, actually. And then uh, that's the end of the level and takes you right into Moe's Tavern, which is level four. Moe's Tavern slash casino slash double bar. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, this, his tavern is in the show. Like, even just the episodes that we watched today, he, his tavern does double as other establishments, like a boxing arena yeah. and uh, technically a pet shop for, during Prohibition. Yes. <laughs> Those are the two episodes we literally just watched. Yeah. So, you know. But I, I, you know, I don't believe I ever saw it accessible via the underground. It was always just downtown Springfield. Yep. You could just get it on the street corner. So, uh, but you show up in Moe's Tavern. I think Moe's in the background wearing his season early seasons outfit. Well, that's one thing you notice too. Is there's a couple of characters that are like different colored. Like Bart's wearing a blue shirt, which was used in a lot of the promotional stuff. Yes, and it's interesting because during the intro of this game, yeah, the traditional like Bart's on his skateboard, like jumping. Yeah. He has the orange shirt on. The orange shirt on, which is obviously what he wears in the show. So uh, I think this game is was developed on season one. But then when they went to do the intro, they had already changed him to wearing orange. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So well let me ask you, so season one of The Simpsons, is Bart wearing a blue shirt or an orange shirt? I believe he's wearing a blue shirt. Okay. I'll have to look and it up. was a lot of the promotional stuff. Well, that's what I remember. Is like I had a Bart Simpson toy, like a stuffed, you know, doll or whatever, and it was it was a blue shirt, and so that would make sense that you know it was all the season one promotional stuff. But either way, so you know, and then Mo had a different color tie and shirt on. So there's a few different, uh, you know, palette swaps from what you're used to. Again, this is an early Simpsons era video game. Yeah. Uh, so you're in Mo's Tavern. You're walking around. You are being attacked by drunks. Uh, men and women, by the way. We yeah. don't discriminate here. Uh, Moe's in the background just trying to stay away from it all. And uh, as you make your way through the level, uh, you end up uh, at the end fighting essentially a very large drunken patron hiding behind a second bar. There's yeah. two bars in this. There's two bars in Moe's and gambling. And yeah, you get Barney's way. there, too. Yep, Barney's there. You're working your way across the casino tables. Yeah. It's just... Uh, it's You w walk past the Simpsons arcade cabinet. Yeah, I would even mention that. Yeah, there's a Simpsons arcade cabinet. in The Simpsons was always kind of very meta with that, right? Because, yeah. like, don't they make fun of Fox all the time? Or all they the used time. To? Yeah, yeah, which is the, obviously the channel that they're broadcast on in the U.S. Uh, so, yeah, they're no stranger to the, the meta humor, I guess. Yeah. So you get to the end. You fight this big drunk. Uh, he breathes fire, which I, I think I'd said, like, oh, he's drinking some pretty strong stuff if he's able to breathe fire. It really looks like Mo with no hair. It kind of does. It's got that weird, like, there's only a certain amount of faces that Simpsons characters have, right? There's, like, different templates. Yeah. I think the most unique ones are, I, I don't know. Yeah, like Mr. Mo Burns. Mr. Burns is kind of a, a, a unique, like, no one else has his face shape. Yeah. But you look at, like, Homer. Honestly, I used to think Homer and Lenny were brothers because they both had the same, like, With the stuff. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. scruff, which apparently is just, that's just a signal for any person who has a goatee because, yes. like, when he's fighting those homeless people in the boxing episode, they all had a similar looking scruff, too. Yes. So, you know, but he, they're not. Because he shaves it, and then it instantly comes back. Exactly. So it's, it's, it's facial hair. <laughs> it is. It's facial hair. Uh, so anyway, you beat the drunk, uh, and then you move on to the next level, which is the Springfield Butte, Butt, Boot, Booty. I don't know. It's like a national park, basically. Okay. Which I, I'm sure that's in some of the episodes. Maybe yeah, there's a park. Yeah, they go camping or whatever. And so you're, uh, you know, you're you're walking around. You're you're fighting off uh, more of those henchmen, the corporate henchmen, but also some uh, Bigfoot characters are coming through. Yeah. That look like Homer gorillas almost. Yep. I guess. Uh, are they are something from the show? Is no. There, no. Okay. That I Made that up. Uh, so you're you're going through, and then you get to the end. That you're fighting a big bear, basically. It's nothing. Big bear. Nothing crazy. Big bear. Is that an actual? 
I can't, I'm going to keep asking you. No, like, <laughs> again, it's only of season one, and it's probably the least, the you know, of the old episodes. I, yeah. I usually start at season three. Okay, so this was this game start was my little mini binge to like season twenty, and then I you circle st- back. Again. You don't you don't ever go all the way to the end. No, no, it's not worth it. Okay, I live in my bubble. <laughs> Seventeen seasons. Seventeen. Hey, that's a lot of seasons because there were full seasons. These were like yeah. twenty-four episode seasons. So yeah. that's a lot. So okay, you beat the big bear, and then from here, you um, at the end of this level, actually, you fall down a cliff. You're still chasing Maggie. You're trying to hang on the helicopter. You fall, and then you land at the bottom of the waterfall. And you're knocked out, and all of a sudden, dream sequence. You're like, oh, this is unique. So stage six is actually Dreamland. So yeah. you and whoever you're, you know, you, you and. Uh, you we know. went in as Homer and Bart and came out as Lisa and Bart. Yes, because we changed characters midway through. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, because it's got like the little cutscenes, kind of like the Ninja Turtles game would. Like depending on the turtles you were using, they would show them in the cutscenes. Yes. Which I always thought was a nice touch. So you're in Dreamland, which is basically just like you're on clouds and like it's like a black background. You're fighting like donuts with arms and legs. You're fighting donuts. You're fighting devil Barts. Yep. Uh, you're fo- what else? What else is in there? Um, oh, like, uh, like Marge's heads pop out of the of the clouds. Of the clouds. Yep. So there's Marge heads. There's and then a big bowling ball at the end. Yeah. So basically, and then I think you're fighting giant saxophones at one point. Yeah, you are. Because you're basically going through all care all the characters' different uh, nightmares or whatever. Yep. You know. So like, I guess the devil Barts were for Bart. Uh, Homer was the donuts. Marge was her head, basically. And yeah, then- now I, I view it a different way. Okay. I view it like Marge dislikes the the donuts. Okay. Fighting what you dislike. Oh, maybe. Marge fights the donuts. Okay. Um, maybe Homer fights Marge because she nags him. Yeah, but Lisa likes the saxophone and you're fighting saxophones. So Bart's fighting the saxophones. Oh, maybe. And then what? And then Lisa's fighting the devil Bart. Devil Bart. Okay. I mean, that's one way to look at it for sure. From a certain point of view. Correct. Uh, and then you end, so, again, kind of a lame boss, whatever. It's You're fighting a giant bowling ball. I feel like there's no real significance to that no. other than it's... Not that a homer likes to bowl. Yeah, it's a bowling ball that grows arms and, you know, shoots missiles, and yep. it's really hard. <laughs> it took a beating. It took a, yeah, it took a really big beating. That one was one of the harder bosses to beat because it just, it took so many hits. And we were yeah. saying, we're like, well, why the hell is this? And I was like, well, it's a bowling ball. They're sturdy, right? Yeah. You know, it's... You're just literally attacking a bowling ball. So you finally beat the bowling ball, and then we go to the next bonus level, which I thought was hilarious. Bitch slap. You're bitch slapping your character to wake them up from the dream. And so, you know, it's just for score again. That's funny, though. But it wakes you up, and then at the end, and then you go to the second to last stage, which is Channel 6. Yep. Not to be confused with the Ninja Turtles Channel 6, mind you. Oh, really? Yeah. I never put two and two together. Yeah, April O'Neil, Channel 6 News, right? Camp Brockman. Yeah, exactly. And so um, you were going through a TV studio, and I I don't know if this was the first one to do it, but there's definitely been, it's been done to death since then. If you're ever in a a game where you're fighting through like a movie or TV studio, yep. you're always going to fight through some movie sets of whatever it is. Yeah. And, and so in this case, uh, you end up fighting. So obviously you're going past the standard TV station stuff. You end up on like a, a, a Japanese like ninja epic set or whatever. You start yeah. fighting these ninjas. Um, and then you end up uh, fighting the final boss who is like a kabuki warrior, basically. What year did the turtle start the anime show? Uh, 87. Oh, was, wow. So they were out before the turtle. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Out before the Simpsons. Yeah. So, I mean... I don't know, man. Uh, I will say I, I do. I, I'm wondering if the Shredder's Revenge video game, which was obviously a, it was a Turtles game, yeah. but did it take inspiration from this stage where you're going through a TV studio and fighting on different sets, or nah, was it just such a trope so. at that point? I think that, it was just a yeah, it's just a thing. Maybe, but anyway, you're fighting the Kabuki boss. He's nothing special. He's just throwing stuff back and forth and uh, screaming, and you beat him, and you move on. And then you get to the last level, um, which very much, to me, paralleled the Turtles arcade game uh, and, and area where you're fighting Krang and Shredder. Yep. Because you fight uh, Smithers first, and he's wearing essentially a suicide vest. Yeah. Uh, he's got bombs that he whips out and throws at you from his trench coat. Uh, you got to avoid those and just beat him, and then he kind of blows himself Smithers up. Smithers with blue hair. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, that's right. That was one thing you said, was Smithers had blue hair in this, and he yeah, normally he has normally. I mean... I don't want to say currently in the golden years. Yeah, he has gray hair. Gray hair. Yeah. So anyway, you beat Smithers. He's he's tough, but he's not that tough. And then you end up fighting Mr. Burns. But oh, surprise! It's Mr. Burns in a giant mech outfit. Excellent. Yes. And so you start off by fighting him. You know, 
where he's walking around in the mech suit, and then, you know, you basically just beat that down, you, you blow up his legs, and you're like, all right, cool, he's gonna sit still. Nope, then he grows wheels. Well, he grows, yeah, tank treads next. Yep. You gotta fight those, and then, you know, you, you blow those up, and then, oh, okay, he's gotta be done. Nope, then he's got, like, some weird inflatable thing underneath him that he hops around in. Yep. And then you finally beat that, you just, you, that's when you start seeing the, the tank shell take damage, and you finally beat that off of him. Yes. And then at the end, he's just standing there, and you like hit him one time, you literally. Punch, yeah, you literally punch him once, and he falls over. And it was funny because you actually were Homer. Yes. So it was literally one punch. Yeah, one punch. Homer knocked him down, and he fell over, and and that's. I don't think he died, obviously, but you know maybe he keeled over and, and did something. Who knows? Uh, and then that's the end. You save Maggie, and you walk off into the distance, and that's it. That's it. That's restart just, the game. That's just, and you restart the game. It is one of those where, like I said, if you have easy access to it, it's it's one of those autopilot games. You get it done in thirty to forty minutes. Yeah, man. And if you want it, that feeling of beating a game, this is a great one to just beat quickly. You know, it's not yeah. it's not a hard game as long as you've got the ability to pump in either real or fake quarters for it. Yes. So, I, I don't know. I like it. I mean, how would you rank it among like beat 'em ups in general? Well, at the time. The, to me, there were three really big beat 'em ups. Yeah, they were viewed as being the premier ones. Yes, Turtles. Yep, X Men. Oh yeah, and this, The Simpsons. Yeah, all of them were made by the same company. Konami. Yeah, that's why. I mean, it's who would you say makes better beat 'em ups, Konami or Capcom? I mean, from what I played, it would be Konami. Konami. Yeah. Whereas I have a lot of the Capcom beat 'em ups in like the collection. And they're a very obscure titles. Like I never heard of some of these franchises. They're yeah. just, but the gameplay's solid. You know what I mean? Um, the, I think these were just more iconic franchises. I think that's what it was. And I, I'm trying to think of other. I, mean, I know there have been other franchises that have made beat 'em ups. Like I know Batman did a beat 'em up on the Super Nintendo for yeah. Batman Returns. Didn't Family Guy have a beat 'em up? I think I they think did. So. I don't I have to look it up. I feel like Family Guy might have. Uh, South Park is not, but that makes sense because the way the characters move, it wouldn't really be conducive for... A Power Rangers did a beat-em-up. Power Rangers, of course, did a beat-em-up. That's not a surprise. Uh, I think Cartoon Network had a beat-em-up, actually. Um, there's probably a Nickelodeon beat-em-up. I don't know. Beat-em-up is a great genre because it lets you explore whatever like setting the show takes place in and, 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 and see all the cool characters. And yeah. it's... Everyone, you know, like... Like I said, it's just basic combat. So, like, any, pretty much any character that has, you know, two arms and two legs can be in a beat em up. Yeah. Unless, unless you're South Park, because again, they're Kids. squat. Well, no, they're tiny, though. They don't That's really true. have legs, they just kind of hop around. So, yeah, like, that would hobble. Yeah, I guess. But anyway, it's not, it's not as good. So, I think, I, I, I don't know. I'm a huge fan of beat em ups to the point where, like, if I see indie games that are beat em ups, uh, as long as they're like an affordable price, I will absolutely check those out. Like it's like it's one of my favorite genres. It's also one that I can play with my kids really easily too. Like, like my youngest son Eli, who's six, uh, he loves like beat 'em up games because it's easy to go, especially like on our arcade cabinets. Because you just move left to right and you hit two buttons and you you win. Like that's, that's, that's all it. you need. That's all you need, and and it's perfect for that. So I don't know, man. The <laughs> weird thing is though, only one out of the three got ported. To home consoles. Turtles and Time did. Well, so did X-Men. No, it didn't. I had it on PS3. I mean, like, back in the day, like, on the Oh, cartridge. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. X-Men and, and uh, Simpsons never got, Never like a, got a, a, an, an initial release in well, the 90s. And that's the thing. I don't know why, because, like, the Simpsons would have run on, like, a, on the Super Nintendo and the Genesis pretty easily, I yeah. would think. You know what I mean? And the X-Men, during the, the heyday of the TV show? Did they why never... Why would you do that? I'm trying to think, though. Did they get one? I... Uh, I, I mean, know. there was games. Yeah, obviously, it was yeah, one of the first ones we did on this, but it wasn't the beat 'em up. It wasn't, but I'm trying to think. I guess that never did get a port, but I know that they like ported the Avengers. I think the Avengers got their beat 'em up ported to Super Nintendo. The maybe. Avengers. Yeah, that's what I remember. Yeah, it was back. Or was it Captain America and the Avengers? Uh, maybe that's what it was called. Even I don't even know. Either way, but it was... I, it's still like to me that's one of great uh, gaming's greatest like yeah miscues. Yeah, hundred percent. Why were they not? released yeah they could have released that a version of it on yeah. on the consoles and they and i, I mean turtles in time came out great well and and even prior to that with turtles 2 the arcade game for nintendo right yeah. that was it was oh it's one of my favorite games i love that game you know that yeah. <laughs> whatever it's fantastic it's not as good as the arcade port but yeah. for nintendo it was great you know what i mean yeah so i don't know it just 
it is. It's a missed opportunity. I would love to see it if this game ever got like an HD remake to maybe revitalize that the would franchise. Be great. Yep. Um, and you could even like you don't have to make it like a shot for shot remake. You could throw in some modern characters and maybe add a couple of extra levels in there. I um, mean, look what it's you had the turtles do. They're beat yeah. them up. Yeah, you had Shredder's Revenge, which is amazing. Yep. Streets of Rage redid something a couple years ago. Yep, Streets Power of Rage. Rangers are coming up with another one, I think, yeah, end of this year or beginning of next year. Yep, there's a, there's a new Double Dragon. G.I. Joe is getting a beat em up. Yeah, so, the, I mean. We're in the age of beat em ups, and I'm fine with that. I just, I think they need, I think Simpsons deserve. Don't even, charge me full price, though. No, I would pay like 20 to $30 for a Simpsons. Hell, make it a sequel. Make it a new Simpsons beat em up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's plenty make them of both. Yeah. Give the original as is, and then make a, a, a sequel. Yeah, no, I, I would absolutely play a sequel to The Simpsons Arcade because again, it's it's a basic, super fun beat 'em up. Yeah, and you know, it's unfortunately there's not a lot to go into detail wise on this game because there's, you know what I mean? There's not much, uh, <laughs> there's not much really to say because it's a pretty basic concept. Well, the thing is, what we could discuss is. Is this the best Simpsons game that was made? That's a very good question. Um, and I would argue, there's. I would first off say that there's more bad than good Simpsons games. 100%. I don't, I don't think anyone's going to disagree with that. You had all those on like the Nintendo and Super Nintendo and maybe Sega as well. Like Virtual Bart, Bart versus the Space Mutants, yeah. Bart's a Nightmare. It was all about Bart, by the way. You noticed that. Like he was like the poster child of the mid 90s. Yeah. Um, but they weren't really great. They weren't terrible, but they weren't great. They were like middling. Yeah, I would say this is a great Simpsons game. Yes, and I would say it is an above average beat 'em up. Yes, and then the only other one I can think of that is worth replaying is another one that we messed around with, which yeah. I forgot to mention earlier. Is we we had a little bit of fun with Simpsons Hit and Run on the GameCube. Yes, uh, and it's a fun game. Um, I would say that one would also do very well with a remake. Absolutely. You know what I mean? It's like a little bit of Crazy Taxi, a little bit of a very light GTA. Yeah, you know, and it's fun. And it's it's seeing Springfield in three, 2D, 3D. You know, yeah. I, mean, well, I guess it is 3D, technically. And, um, you know, so yeah, I would say that... Not Simpsons Wrestling? Fuck Simpsons Wrestling. So hard. Oh my god, I hate that game so much. I've never played it. No, I will show you gameplay of that game. And you Oh, I've seen it. Oh, you've seen it. You've yeah. just never played it. It's got all. It looks terrible. It is more than terrible. It is It is one of the worst wrestling games ever. It, you can't call it a wrestling game. Hmm. It's not good. Um, Was it out on the Dreamcast? Because we're still trying to figure out what is the definitive wrestling game on the Dreamcast. Well, it won't be that. I can tell you that right now. And it won't be Royal Rumble. And it will not be the WWE Royal Rumble. So that means there's only three games. Yeah. it's It would be, yeah, ECW. Oh, okay. Are oh, you talking about The Simpsons? Yes. No, no. I was saying, oh. like, I was just teasing. Like, there's only three other games then. Yeah, no. It's there's not many. So, but for this, I would say The Simpsons arcade game and The Simpsons beat 'em up. Yeah. Or excuse me, Simpsons hit and run are the only two good Simpsons games. Yep. Um, yeah. I mean, w what would you say is more fun for you? Would it, would you play if you were to pick one to play? I guess you have to. There's different I mean, mindsets. There's there's what? Yeah. They're totally I mean, different games. You got a half hour. You can you can beat the arcade game. Yeah, but if let's say you're like, hey, I'm gonna, I, I want something a little longer, then you, you bust out hit and run. That's and, it. That's your only real choice. That's your only real. T that's exactly right. Um.
Welcome to my world.